Hi everyone, I'm Matt Mayer from uh, Genietech. Uh, I'm here to introduce to you our new ATSC 3.0 products. Uh, so ATSC 3.0 is a new standard for the US? Yes, new standard for the US. It's an OFDM based modulation that is scalable bitrate wise, so it can support uh, mobile applications as well as fixed home applications. Um, so this is um, uh, like over-the-air TV, right? The, the, the main over-the-air TV system for the US, Canada, and... Uh, Korea as well. Korea. Yes, and it's actually a hybrid system where there is a base layer that comes through the off-air broadcast portion, and there are enhancements available through an internet connection. Those are combined in a hybrid set-top box. They're like synchronized somehow? Yes, so the base layer uh, gives you the base video, but you can do things like UHD and HDR using that uh, IP connection. Uh, and the UHD can also happen over the air? The yes. 4K is 60 H.265, right? Yes, it's a scalable HEVC. Um, yes, and the base layer you can do over the air. And uh, so what is this board you're showing here? Is it going yeah, here? so this is actually the board that's inside this box. It's uh, an NXP uh, i.MX8M processor, um, a uh, Sony tuner, and then we are working with our software partner Bitrouter on the ATSC 3.0 stack for that box. So what does Bitrouter do? Is it specialized in the ATSCs? Software Bitrouter support? has a, a very long history in doing um, uh, stacks for off-air modulation, so ATSC, also for QAM, and now ATSC 3. So uh, until now, there's been only ATSC 1 in the US, right? Correct. Yes. So we skipped ATSC 2. Uh, right. So there were some discussions along the way of different different um, technologies to be used, and eventually it all just turned into ATSC 3. So it skips right over ATSC 2. Is ATSC one uh, quite popular, uh, TV of the air, like millions of people use it? Yes, so in the era of cord cutting, a lot of streaming services aren't able to offer local channels through, AT, uh, through uh, their streaming services. They don't have the rights to do that. So a lot of people who are doing cord cutter services are picking up an off-air off uh, uh, signal to be able to get their local channels. The service is pretty good in the US, right? This, you get lots of channels. Like, yes, definitely. Yes. Um, there are usually anywhere from six to ten in most markets. In the major markets, there's certainly more. And then on each of those, uh, you have a lot of sub-channels that are available. So you can get upwards of 30 to 40 uh, channels through those broadcast signals. It's free. And it's free. In Europe, it's more popular, no? Uh, the GVBT is like... Uh Everybody's doing that, Yes. So well, actually, and a lot of are transitioning to DVB-T2 at this point, which is even higher bandwidth, more signals. So what's the difference between DVB-T2 and ATSC-3? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, aside from uh, the modulation is obviously different. It's, it is both OFDM-based, but the way it's configured is a little different. Um, and the, uh, the video standards are a little different as well. OFDM, what does that mean? Uh, Orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It's a way that uh, a signal is constructed through multiple carriers so that if you lose some of the carriers through multipath over the RF environment, um, that you're still able to pick up a signal. And this is over the 600 megahertz or something like that, like the, the white spaces, the, whether it was the same area as the white spaces. This is TV spaces. It's the, yes, TV broadcast spectrum, which in the US has been uh, compacted down to about 54 megahertz to 600 megahertz. And so that means it's long distance, everything is covered, yes. even indoors. Yes, and that's, that's part of where the, the scalable video and the scalable modulation comes in, because you can choose different bit rates. The lower the bit rate, the more robust the signal, the better it is to do uh, for mobile applications. And the HGVC codec is, uh, is pretty good for even 4K. You can go quite low and it's okay, right? Like Netflix is doing 16 megabits of 4K. Right. Yes, and that's, that's actually one of the advantages with the hybrid system. So you can do something uh, with the base rate through broadcast, but you can also add to that and make an enhancement using the IP connection if you have a hybrid set-top box. So for example, in this box right here, you can uh, go over the air or you can connect an ethernet, boom, or go right. over the, on the Wi-Fi, yep. and then that might increase the quality. Right, exactly. And it's just uh, 
no no need to be like a super advanced user to know how to use and it's automatic right correct it's the choices that the broadcasters make the people providing the signals how they want to provide that to you so uh, genia tech uh, are you like the first to do this solution uh, this is like groundbreaking or is new is very special or Yes, in, in conjunction with, with the NXP uh, chipset and the bit router software that we're doing, we are one of the first to have this available. So NXP must be really proud yes, of this indeed. work, right? Yes, indeed. There's three places you can see this demo here at CES. is our booth, bit router, and NXP's uh, demo outside the central hall. So uh, they're probably eager to do more and more partnerships with uh, Geniotech to get more stuff working. Yes, you're absolutely. you're like experts in making things work. Yes, we have a whole line of, of products coming based on NXP processors, so the ATSC3 is, is the first of that, uh, but we have a number of single board computers um, or embedded SOM modules so that you can use those, take advantage of those NXP SOCs for other applications. And also development boards, you yes. do those, right? Yes, absolutely. And what is this, the small one here? Yeah, so basically what we've also done is this area right here is the um, the demodulator, the receiver for ATSC3, we've turned that into a USB stick format that you can use with your PC. And we've also uh, made an embeddable module for that as so well. It's just USB, yep. boom, you yep. add ATSC3 to your PC. Yep. Uh, it could potentially work on uh, firmwares of different TV boxes, right? Potentially. Uh, down the road, yes. This is a PCB in there? Yep. Uh, that's this? That's the PCB that's here. So a slightly different form factor, but the same function. Did you say something about Sony? Yes, it's got a Sony uh, receiver is, is what we're using for ATSC. Is it one of the chips, or what is, what is yes. the chips here? <laughs> um, Secret, yes, maybe. Yes, proprietary. OK, I'm not going to try to <laughs> reveal too much. And what's, uh, this is some IMX8 MM. Yeah, so this is one of the, the developer boards that we were talking about. So there's an uh, IMX 8M. Uh, what we call a SOM or a system on module. So this can be used in a number of applications. You can do your development on this and then add it to whatever um, carrier board you want for your specific application. Can you pull it off easily? Uh, I think so. Yep. Sorry. Right, so this is yep. IMX 8 uh, MM, which is uh, Quad ARM Cortex A53. Right. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, an important new chip for um, in, in XP. There is like long-term support, and they're eager yes. to get into the industrial embedded world, right? Yes, absolutely. This is a, a great choice for uh, applications that are doing video processing, camera inputs, things like that. And uh, it's great to have uh, not just ATSC3, but maybe other stuff that uh, Geniatech is optimizing and yes definitely way. so as, again specifically this one would be good for video processing applications or artificial intelligence uh, video recognition um, there's a range of applications that are that require high-end video processing this would be great for um, and this is connecting some fast memory here uh, that's actually a PCIe uh, mini slot so you can add other interfaces here like a cellular radio and uh, USB, a bunch of USB. Yep. And uh, this one, it's so. Th this was the the NXP stuff right here. Right. Yes. And you have some other solutions at the bo at the booth. Should we walk around? Yeah, absolutely. So, one of the other main areas we're emphasizing this year are again more system on module type solutions. Uh, or single board computers. So we also have a range of uh, rock chip based solutions. This is a 3399. Yes, and one of the interesting features of these is there is a neural network processing available on this one. So it's a very um, high bandwidth, uh, things that have uh, high processing power needs. This is a great solution for that. And it's again like a SOM solution? Yep, this one's uh, a SOM. So project development can eventually customize the board that goes under. Yeah, definitely. We also have um, that same chip in a single board computer form factor. So this is one where that module uh, has already been integrated to a main board. Also 3399 Pro. Yes. 
So it's a dual A72 with quad A53 and a lot of different ports and stuff happening here. Yep. All right. Uh, HDMI ins and outs, USB, uh, Ethernet. With Engineer Tech, you're doing lots of Qualcomm work also. You have all the Snapdragon 410. I yes. guess also 610 and 820 and everything. Uh, 410 and 820 are the, are the two that we're focusing on. And it's so, getting lots of traction? Oh, absolutely. The, the place where we're using a lot of the 410 is in our IoT gateways, which is our other focus here at the show. Let's go over there. So this is uh, the IoT corner, right? Yes, this is uh, all of our gateways and modules. Um, so the gateway we were just talking about, the board we were just showing over there is inside. The, um, sorry, wrong module. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Maybe uh, you, your, your colleague can also help with this part, right? Yes. This one is based on the Qualcomm 410. 410. Yeah. Yep. 410 and this one. And uh, this is the LoRa gateway. Yeah. Yes. You right. great, yeah. Do you want to grab the, the microphone? Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. I, I just, it's just, <laughs> if you speak, it's a few far away. And here's <laughs> some IoT, uh, what you call it, peripheral sensors and all that stuff. The gateway? Yeah. This is LoRa, uh, this is the Zigbee gateway. And uh, with, it's kind of working with different kind of uh, Zigbee device from any kind of uh, different uh, company. Like thousands of different devices supported. Uh, yes, yeah, it's kind of compatible with them. Right. And uh, some some new, this is the lower gateway. Yeah, this is um, lower gateway. Some new solutions here also. Do you have a implemented NRF uh, Nordic? Yeah. In the, just this? Oh. Yeah, just this one. This is uh, radio. It's uh, uh, like uh, turn the USB device to be getaway to connect with with Zigbee device. So you can connect every um, Zigbee device. Every TV box can use this. Yeah. And then with that you get uh, IoT support. Yeah, that's true. All right. And some uh, something new there. This one goes 4G. Uh, this card is uh, LTE. Set a box. LTE. Hmm. Support cool. LTE, but the low cost. Low cost? Yeah. So it's uh, Qualcomm, Qualcomm 8909. Yeah. Um, low cost. So some some places, some people just get internet with LTE. So they just do LTE for all their internet. Yeah. They don't use ADSL or cable or something. All right. And this is the Android IoT gateway. All right. So, um, it's, it's uh, been a busy, busy show, interesting yes, yes, uh, things, things happening. Yes, absolutely. Oops, sorry. sorry, no problem. <laughs> and what's happening in the U.S. market for Junior Tech? Sure, the U.S. market most, uh, again, what we're focusing on is enabling people with embedded modules and also gateway products and sensor products for industrial and uh, commercial applications. So that's really uh, a big part of our business for this year. And uh, I guess this market is, you're being strong in this market and you have uh, some customers that are kind of impressed with uh, how you get things done. Yes, work. yes, definitely, especially our partners. So you saw the uh, the ATSC 3 box is, is a partnership with NXP. Uh, one thing that I missed over here is a sensor reference platform that we've done with our partners Aero, uh, on Semi, and uh, Bosch. So what this is is a worker safety sensor. It's uh, meant to be you know wrist mounted here. Uh, it has positional sensors in it, air quality sensors, humidity, temperature, um, so that you can uh, keep an eye on your workers who might be in hazardous environments. But basically, this also serves as a reference design for all of our uh, IoT products. So, so you, you work can, with Bosch? Yes. Those are the big guys? Yes. <laughs> so you, you do everything from small partners to huge? Yes, so again, uh, Aero, uh, Bosch, OnSemi recognized our, our expertise. Uh, they were happy to bring us on to partner and build this module and do the software for it. And it's working, it's smooth. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. And what's you can. Cheap, um, what, what's running in there? What's, what's happening inside this, like in terms of hardware? 
<laughs> it's like a little little sensor uh, yeah, microcontroller. Are, right, there's a um, Bluetooth microcontroller. And that then is the, the NRF. The, right, and then the variety of sensors uh, coming from uh, Bosch and OnSemi. All right. Cool. All right, the, thanks a lot, and uh, looking forward to the next uh, with Jimmy, I think. Because there's gonna, keep going to be new stuff during the whole year, right? Absolutely. This is just what we're introducing today, so keep an just eye on us for... Just the CES. Yes. Exactly. Other shows coming up. There's a... Digital Signage Show, NAB. We will be Infinity there, World. Hong Kong Fair. So. Yeah. All right. See you there.